Uh, thanks for tuning in. We've got Wayne Madsen coming up right now. Now, Madsen is, of course, an NSA insider. He, uh, he's got a lot of information. He's been a frequent guest on this show, and he's been on the money, on the mark, every time with everything that he has said. It's all come out. It's all come true. And he was involved, I believe, in the leaking of information to the press in the EU that recently broke. We'll let him clarify that if I'm wrong. About uh, the U.S. government spying on its own allies, European governments. And there's some controversy about that story. And here to help explain and navigate that is Wayne Madsen himself. Mr. Madsen, welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. It's great to have you back on. Can you hear me, sir? I don't think he can hear me. Can you hear me, Wayne? I, I, I can not hear you, no. All right, now. <laughs> all right, good to hear you. Welcome to the show, sir. Oh, good to be with you. Good to hear your voice. Now, you've been spot on with your predictions, but tell us uh, what is the deal with, I think, The Guardian pulling its story that it initially published announcing that the U.S. government was spying on its European allies. What's, what's the story behind that story? Well, the story behind the story, uh, unfortunately, uh, what I told the Observer, and that's a sister newspaper, The Guardian, they're owned by the same company. Um, I told the reporter for The Observer, I said, look, uh, German Chancellor Merkel and French President Hollande are, cry are crying about the fact that this uh, uh, cable tap was discovered because of the uh, Ed Snowden revelations on the transatlantic 14 cable that goes from Denmark to the Netherlands, to Germany, to Belgium, to France, and then over to the UK, and then to Tuckerton, New Jersey, um, that um, they said, oh, you're, you're spying on the communications of German and French citizens. When in fact, both these countries, Germany to a much bigger extent than France, uh, have been uh, engaged in providing signals intelligence data, including information tapped from submarine cables to the NSA for decades, and it hasn't stopped. So, you know, they're crying crocodile tears because what they don't want their own populations to know is that, the, that they themselves are spying on their own citizens. And some of this information, I would suggest a large part of the information is being sent to NSA that's so overwhelmed with data now, they have to build a 17 football <laughs> field data center in right. Utah that can handle one yottabyte. And don't ask me how many zeros are after that number, one yottabyte of data. Uh, but uh, this is this is why I, I, what I told the observer. I gave them two declassified documents. Oh, I, I don't have any classified documents. I haven't worked at NSA for a long, long time. But I also know uh, what's declassified and, and what those documents meant at the time they were still well, classified. What's interesting, though, Wayne, is that y the things that you've been saying and the declassified documents that you are able to access and acquire, they suddenly have more relevance and context in, in the context of Ed Snowden going public with his revelation. So now suddenly, are you finding that the, the press, the mainstream media, is taking you more seriously as well for the things that you've been warning on for years? Well, to the contrary, uh, yes. Well, the, the, now one thing about The Observer, uh, they contacted me. Uh, there's been some suggestions that The Observer got their uh, information from another blog, uh, and I gave an interview to the person that runs that blog. That's Simon Davies, an old friend of mine, used to head up Privacy International. I'm on. I'm still on the International Advisory Board of Privacy International. But we discussed ways to advance this story uh, and and show the hypocrisy of the French and the British in this matter. And uh, he, you know, the the Observer was contacted. I gave an interview to Simon Davies, who put it on the privacysurgeon.com website. And then the uh, observer called me to verify everything I said, and I did. And, I, and they all had these declassified documents. The observer came back and said, look, uh, we understand that you've written some controversial things in the past. I said, yeah, to say the least, I, 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 don't, <laughs> work at, I don't work at NSA anymore. I, my, I make my living as a journalist. I do muckraking journalism. And, and that's very uncomfortable to certain Chardonnay swilling people that, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, inhabit uh, the, uh, the expensive uh, clubs and restaurants of Manhattan and D.C. But, you know, 
that's that's what I do for a living. So they were aware of this. They said they ran my quotes to the legal department of the uh, mail and guardian um, um, corporate uh, parent. Right. They they signed off on it. Um, the editors signed off on it. And then when the story hits, uh, the Guardian, of course, put it on their website. And then it was on the first edition, the print edition of the Observer, the Sunday Observer. So why did they pull it off of the online edition then? Well, they not only pulled it off the online uh, the online version, but the second print run of the Observer. Uh, they dropped my picture on the front page for one of an old and haggard looking Mick Jagger. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean... Uh, but it, it was too late. And uh, I, see, I would I got a call saying it's too late. The the uh, the observer has already gone from it's already running in the presses and then it goes on to the trucks and out to what the British call the news agents. They're the those sidewalk stands and the places that sell newspapers right. around around Britain. So so it was out there. And uh, um, so it's easy to pull a website, but it's very hard to pull a print edition, you can come out with a new edition. It cost them a lot of money to do this. Why did they do it? I have to figure that um, I created a firestorm with my revelations yeah. about the Germans and the French, because one of the, the biggest German newspapers, uh, Die Welt, also put it on their website with a picture of Angela Merkel with me on, uh, with my ca uh, caption underneath of my quote stating, that Merkel complaining about spying was like the inspector Reynaud in the movie Casablanca complaining that there was gambling going on in Rick's cafe. <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Right. There's gambling. Well, that's what she did. Uh, picking up where you left off there, my question to you is, you know, why aren't the people of Germany and France thrilled that the NSA is spying on them? Because the NSA should be keeping them safe, just like they do Americans. Well, that's what's happened. See, a lot of these, all these arrangements with the Germans and the French and the Dutch and the Danes and everyone else, they were done during the Cold War. But remember what happened, the Soviet Union, which was a much overplayed threat, you know, during right. the Cold War, disappears and they need a new, uh, a new enemy. And it became terrorism, specifically global jihadist terrorism. Yeah. And, you know, let's not talk about who has funded these terrorist groups <laughs> over the years. Al Qaeda, which was fighting, was organized by the CIA to fi fight the Soviets. The Taliban was uh, organized by the CIA to fight the other Afghan uh, uh, factions. Uh, you know, so all all the finger, the Muslim Brotherhood was started by British intelligence and then uh, started working for the uh, the American intelligence. Uh, so, you know, our fingerprints are all over these groups. But they serve the purpose of providing that enemy, that that suspicious, mysterious enemy that uh, the governments need to uh, basically cow their populations, right. make them live in a state of fear. Just like time. out of 1984. Yeah. Uh, um, is there any indication that the Observer slash Guardian is going to reinstate that story? Or are they now too afraid to actually print the truth on this topic? Well, what happened was after they printed the story, and as I said, this was vetted. Uh, the, 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 you know, my my past as a journalist was well known to them. People who say they didn't bother checking Google, of course they check Google. I mean, <laughs> this is a this is a major paper, a major media operation that happens to own new, two newspapers, the Guardian and the Observer. But uh, what uh, what happened was, I think certain European politicians and the Obama administration got nervous that, um, you know, the emperor has no clothes. The, these, right. these, they're not spying on terrorism. They're, uh, as a matter of fact, you, you hear Merkel and Olan complaining about the Americans are spying on us during sensitive EU American trade negotiations. Aha, that's what it's all <laughs> about. That's what it's all about, that that uh, they're, they're afraid uh, we're, we're going to get a leg up on them on trade negotiations. In other words, they care more. Merkel cares more about Volkswagens coming to the United States and Hollande about uh, French Brie sales to the United States than they are the spying on their own people. Sure, That's right. What it boils down to always the case. And, and these two phonies, Hollande and Merkel, uh, you know, think that they can get away with this. You know, crying these crocodile tears. You know, they after they're kicked out of office, they go ought to go on. Um, you know, their own television networks on theater, 
on soap opera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The great. They, they, they really, it's a great act they put on. They have the acting experience. Let me get your take on this, and then we'll go to some calls for you, Wayne. The Register has announced that the Department of Defense is setting up a sentient world PSYOP simulator. That's a, a massive computer system that simulates the decision process of all individuals on the planet. And it even simulates media outlets and utilities and financial institutions and so on. It's going to use this to test PSYOPs to see how the population might react. What do you think about this, uh, this PSYOP simulator? Well, it makes The Matrix, the movie The Matrix, look like a documentary of future events. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, this is our money being wasted on the, this this crap. That's the only that yeah, you know, that's the only word I can use to describe <laughs> it. Uh, you know, psyop simulators. What's the matter with the real the real uh, psyop people? All the sock puppets, some of which attack me immediately. By the way, I think part of what the Guardian, you know, and the Observer, what they reacted to was this same group that went after Dan Rather, you remember. They're, yeah. they're sitting there ready and waiting to go after people. They dig, they dig, dig, dig. Well, this is real psyops, but I guess I guess these people, you know, they have to take a break sometimes. They got to eat. They got to go to the bathroom. So it's better, I guess, for, for these intelligence agencies to have, you know, some mechanism that doesn't take potty breaks and <laughs> uh, breaks and, and smoke breaks. Well, and, right. And it's faster. I mean, they can test something and see how they think it might operate before they actually try a rollout. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But look, you know, the, the, if the American public... Uh, you know, Rand, I love, you know, Rand Paul, he talks about how the government wastes money on, on, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, robotic squirrels and uh, the mating habits of, um, you know, bumblebees and all this other stuff. But the American people knew some of the garbage that the intelligence community has wasted their money on. Oh, yeah. More outrage. But isn't it funny? The intelligence community and military don't come under the austerity cuts as much as, you know, some of the other agencies do. Well, They're, no. Some, some of them provide services, but... Um, you know, for example, the Air Force paid a guy fifty thousand dollars to come up with a feasibility study for a Star Trek transporter device. <laughs> Did he get the information? He got it from a Trekkie website and sold it to the Air Force for Great. fifty dollars. Hey, we should get we should get into that racket, huh? Let's let's See, take okay. some. Let's take some phone calls. Has remote viewers, you know, clairvoyance that go. go That's right. Go talk to dead people, you know. <laughs> I, you know can I say? Yeah. That? Well, um, <laughs> maybe maybe those are the people that have the secrets, and they've, they've been well, killed. I, and they, I'd like to ask Richard Nixon if they have that capability. You know uh, how screwed up things are today, because even Nixon would be shaking his head over this uh, uh, this mess. Yeah. Uh, well, if you walk into the NSA headquarters and you got a bunch of guys with their hands on Ouija boards, then something's definitely wrong wrong with the intelligence community let's uh let's go to a caller frank in north carolina frank welcome to the show you're on with wayne madsen go ahead sir yes order out of chaos their order right uh yeah I sorry my phone is just starting to go a little bit bad here i'll make it quick uh, my source on this is a, a, one individual he says he's received uh uh, warnings from two individual insiders, one in military intelligence, I believe, and another one in law enforcement, I believe. David Laurie Vanderbeek, he's running for governor. I'm not sure if you guys have talked about this yet, but uh, he sounds pretty intelligent, leg you know, legitimate patriot. He says he's got these two guys that have warned him of a possible false flag attack on the Scout Jamboree on the grounds of the Bechtel Reservation in West Virginia beginning July 15th, possibly a bioterrorist uh, false flag attack. Uh, he claims that the governor of West Virginia has already uh, already stated uh, secretly that this is uh, this area is under martial law. All right. Well, well, good good call, Frank. We don't want to put uh, words into the mouth of the governor there, but uh, it's a legitimate question. What do you think, Wayne, of the possibility of upcoming uh, false flags? Well, listen, after what happened at the Social Democratic Youth Camp in Norway outside of Oslo, you know, with Breivik, I, I wouldn't send any kids to these jamborees and these, these uh, you know, camp uh, meetings that especially the ones that have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, public attention, media attention. Uh, I, I just don't think we can do it anymore. Not because I'm afraid of, you know, uh, Joe Jihadi out there setting off a bomb. But uh, as the caller said, there's these there are these, these uh, too many anomalies with some of these, you know, these uh, attacks like Boston Marathon bombing total drill. I, I won't even get into all the other. I know there's a lot of logistics questions on the ground, but the fact is that the uncle, Uncle Ruslan, is more tied up with hey, the CIA. We got to go to break, Wayne. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there, but stay yeah. with us. Uh, we'll be right back after this break. More with Wayne Madsen and your calls straight ahead. This is the Alex Jones Show.
Hi, this is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, with some news about some new additions to the InfoWars store. You know good health is freedom. When you're healthy, you're not a slave to the medical system. Everything works well, your brain, your body, even your spirit. You're a healthier person. And to help support that great health, Alex has asked me to source the cleanest, most potent superfoods and other similar products in the world and bring them to the InfoWars store. So we've done that. The brand name is Health Ranger Select. And we're starting out right now with these three products. We've got Himalayan salt from Pakistan, formed hundreds of thousands of years ago in an ancient seabed long before modern pollution destroyed much of the oceans. This is loaded with trace minerals and it's pristine, true, full spectrum sea salt. We've also got natural attitude turmeric. It's an extract of turmeric, very potent, tastes great, alcohol free. This is from organic turmeric out of India. And we've also got clean chlorella. And we sourced and, and did research on all the chlorella sources around the world. And we found the two cleanest sources that have the lowest levels of any kind of contaminants. In fact, this one is virtually free of all metals and all contaminants. It's called clean chlorella and it's, it's about two thirds protein and it's got chlorophyll and chlorella growth factor in it. Check it out online. It's an amazing superfood that athletes are using and people are using to help support healthy lifestyles. It's fantastic. This is all packaged in our certified organic facility here in Central Texas. There we follow USDA certified standards and we're audited every year by the USDA certifier to make sure that we comply with all organic standards. That combined with the fact that we only source super clean superfoods and raw materials from around the world means that our products represent the cleanest and most potent products that you'll find across the natural products industry. Check all of these out under the Health Ranger Select brand name at the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com. And we'll be bringing you more of these in the near future. Thanks and take care. Yeah, welcome back. We're interviewing NSA, former NSA insider Wayne Madsen, who is the source behind some of the documents that resulted in a, a Guardian story that was then yanked off the web because it made some people nervous. You know, in our world today, uh, people who tell the truth are the most viciously attacked. If you if you lie to everybody, oh, you got it made. You know, you can you can host a show on CNN. You know, you can you can your business is going to get government grants. If you're a big fat liar, you know, no problem. You got it made. But if you tell the truth, oh, now you're going to have struggle. You're going to have to uh, work your way and actually uh, uh, fend off criticism and attacks. And that's the situation that. Most of us are in who are truth tellers, including Wayne Madsen. Uh, Wayne, we're going to take a couple more calls here with you. But uh, on that last point, uh, do you even pay any attention to the critics? Because I don't. I, I don't have time with it. But how do you, how do you deal with the criticism? I I did this morning. I had to fire off some rebuttals to some people who yeah. and that they're journalists and had to point out the the background of these people. There's one guy who writes for the Daily Beast. Now let's remember what the Daily Beast is. You know, the editor is Tina Brown, uh, this doyen of the British uh, Fleet Street circuit, and now um, more lately of the Manhattan uh, Chardonnay swilling crowd. Um, she, um, uh, the, the Daily Beast bought Newsweek from the Washington Post company a couple years ago for a dollar. Okay? <laughs> right, I remember that, a dollar. <laughs> That's what the combined media operations of the Daily Beast and Newsweek are worth. <laughs> One dollar. I would say that that's overly inflated. <laughs> but um, uh, so there's a guy there named Michael Moynihan. Now, this guy, um, uh, he, he's, he was a struggling journalist in the United States. And he, he went where every struggling journalist goes to make a name for themselves. Stockholm, Sweden. Oh. Um, you know, I mean, so... Uh, he gets tied up with a think tank over there called Timbro that's been linked to Carl Rove, the wonderful Carl Rove. You know, this guy's a hack. He's a he's a political party hack for the GOP. Uh, he, he's he's not a journalist. So he attacked. He goes on a vicious attack, suggests that, you know, the um, the the observer never even uh, contacted me. Which <laughs> uh, uh, Well, let's. Let's not give him any more any more attention. The fact the fact is, all of us who tell the truth are going to be just routinely attacked. It's just it just goes with the territory. 
Let's take a call. Uh, let's go to Chris in Kentucky. Chris, you're on the show. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. Wayne Madsen is our guest. Go ahead. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Wayne, I want to thank you, first of all, real quick. Thank you for being a patriot and standing up. My question is, these new phones that are coming out, is this going to be dead of it? You, you move it with your eyes. You can move the web page with your eyes. And can they take a retina scan of your eyes and database in the NSA? Have you had any information about that? Well, look, I'm, I, you know, let me tell you what the NSA has. They have a, a you know, there's a, a group in the DOD called the uh, DOD Advanced Research Projects Agency. As a matter of fact, what we know about metadata and PRISM was a originally a project under Homeland Security and DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. It was called Total Information Awareness yeah, I remember System. That. Yep. It was headed up by none other than uh, disgraced uh, retired Admiral John Poindexter of Iran-Contra infamy. You know, these people never go away. <laughs> they never go away. So um, anyway, um, um, now it's known as PRISM. But NSA... Uh, and it's mostly through their R&D uh, division there. They're always looking at the next phases. They always say, oh, we can't keep up with technology. One thing we know about the intelligence community is they drive technology. Google got its seed money from where? The CIA. Yeah, the Internet came out of DARPA. I yeah. mean, Oracle, Oracle was once the name of a CIA project on a, a relational database system. Now it's a big company. And we're going to so, go to break again, Wayne. Will you stay with us for one more segment? Absolutely. All right. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. We've got Wayne Madsen continuing with us for the next five minutes, plus callers on the line. This is Mike Adams filling in for Alex Jones. You are in the right place if you're tuning in to the Alex Jones Show, so welcome. This is, uh, what is this, the third hour already? How could it be? Time flies when you're being spied on. So, Wayne, um, there was a caller that Alex was unable to get to, I think, yesterday that had a question for you. The caller was asking, can we somehow flip the surveillance technology back onto the government? Is there a way that the citizens can monitor the government and actually create the transparency that presidents always promise but never deliver? Is that possible? Uh, well, I think Snow Ed Snowden has showed, shown it is possible. But unfortunately for him, he's wound up as an international pawn with Vladimir Putin today saying, you know, he can stay in Russia as long as he stops making these revelations. Another person over there said he's applied for asylum in 15 countries. He's really going to wind up like a CIA whistleblower from some uh, a few decades ago named Phil Agee. Phil Agee traveled on a Grenada passport, a Nicaraguan passport, before he settled down with a German passport. Wow. He did eventually come back to the United States after they decided they weren't going to arrest him. But, um, you know, that's the life uh, he's faced. But any wh whistleblowers do that. That's what they're they're trying to expose the government's. Um, uh, you know, the wrongdoings, but look at the price they paid. They've been put in jail. They've had guns drawn on them in the shower. They've, they've uh, lost fortunes. Uh, their retirement nest eggs have disappeared with legal fees. Sure. So this, this is what happens to the whistleblowers. But what about, what if we had a, uh, an initiative where we put webcams in all the offices of all government employees so that the public can log in and see what your <laughs> tax dollars are doing at that moment? You wouldn't see much. You'd see a lot of uh, government employees sleeping or going down <laughs> to fetch these styrofoam uh, boxes full of food. They're like ants, you know. They go back <laughs> forth to the cafeterias in their federal buildings, and 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 they're they're extremely obese people. I I, I suggest that to one uh, one group one time. I was in an elevator at the GSA building in D.C., and it, the elevator didn't move, and there were uh, three rather obese persons on there. And I suggest that then maybe. One, uh, they should take the freight elevator instead. Oh, my. <laughs> they were all in food. From, this is what you would see in any given <laughs> federal problem. Well, I thought I was being politically incorrect, and here you go, breaking a new one open for us there, Wayne. Well, that's. I'm sorry, but that's how the government really works. <laughs> yep, yep. So we don't want those webcams that might be too horrifying for us. Yeah, yeah, they would be horrifying. But look, today, 
you can you can get arrested for taking a photograph of a federal office building if you know. I know. You know, so lots of luck getting a webcam inside. You can't even get a camera on the outside. Yeah, but don't we have the right? I mean, we're paying their salaries. We, we should have the right. Let, let's go to another caller, though. Habu in Wisconsin. Habu, welcome to the Alex Jones Show. You're on with Wayne Madsen. Yeah, hello, uh, Mike Adams uh, yeah. and uh, Wayne Madison. Uh, you know, um, just uh, as an aside, I hope you people in Austin take up the case of the Justin Carter kid who uh, is facing... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, lengthy sentences just for b putting some kid, uh, just kidding posts on Facebook. But anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Madison, may I ask you this for uh, a couple of quick questions? Uh, do you rec um, recommend people adding all these kind of uh, tags, which would you know, uh, which would um, uh, catch the emails? And if a hundred million people of us did it, it would jam would it jam up the system? Oh, the keyword the tags. Uh, we, we only have forty five yeah. seconds. Go ahead, Wayne. Simple answer: No, they've got they've got all kinds of algorithms that look at context and uh, and other words. So they 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 figured that out. That that yeah, was keywords years ago when Echelon was out, and people decided to do that. And uh, they 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 it were it was did not affect their system whatsoever. Uh, Wayne, what's your website? It is WayneMatsonReport.com, and anyone can go to the uh, homepage and read about what happened with the Observer, the Guardian, and with links to the original documents that I provided them. All right, WayneMadsonReport.com, and Madsen is spelled M-A-D-S-E-N. Madsen, two syllables in that name. WayneMadsonReport.com, thank you, Wayne, for joining us on the show today. You bet. viewers have demanded it so now you're gonna get it more pro second amendment gun shows in the month of june what we've learned is you cannot hide behind an eye beam when there's a 50 cal present brothers in arms 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the Infowar.